Hello, my name is Matthew Moore and I'm a freshman at George Mason University. So I'm making this video in collaboration with my IT 103 research paper. This is a project that I had to do. I had to write a research paper about a specific development in the IT field. And so for my paper, I chose to write about virtual reality and the impact that it will have on the gaming industry. So the reason I chose this topic is because I'm a pretty big gamer. I like playing video games. And recently, in 2013, Facebook announced that they bought Oculus Rift, which is a startup company that solely focuses on making virtual reality headsets. So if you don't know what those are, um, they're essentially these headsets that people wear. They're kind of like big looking goggles and it allows them to become immersed in a virtual world. So virtual reality stands for anything that's sort of a simulation of reality. So this could be something like video games. And what these headsets allow people to do is basically take that immersive experience to the next level because it creates this sense of presence. And some of the things that I talked about in my research paper were security issues, social issues, potential uses. So one interesting thing that I found in my research is that virtual reality is actually used to treat patients with PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress, stress disorder. So for example, if someone's in the military and they go overseas and they're in battle or they're in conflict and they come home, they might suffer from PTSD you know, which can be like flashbacks of events they had to go through. And so using VR headsets, if they're, if they can put these soldiers through simulated stressful situations, it helps them to better cope with the reality of what happened and they can readjust and become members, like active members of society again. Also another interesting use was for patients with phantom limb pain which is when someone has an amputated arm or, or leg or just a limb in general, sometimes they'll feel sensations in that limb. And what was interesting is using VR headsets, if someone like, let's say, had a, a missing arm, they were able to map a fake arm into this virtual, rear, into this virtual world, and it allowed them to you know, move around like move their arm as if it was actually there, even though it wasn't. So that's another inter interesting use for virtual reality. And ever since Facebook made the announcement, companies have been like jumping on this sort of virtual reality bandwagon, which is kind of funny because back in the 90s, Nintendo had the Virtual Boy, which was their own sort of version of virtual reality, but obviously it wasn't as advanced as the technology is today. But after that, people sort of forgot about virtual reality. They didn't really care that much about it. But now that Facebook has launched this, you know, partnership with Oculus, people have become really excited about it. So that's why Sony has the Project Morpheus, and you can get um, virtual reality headsets like cardboard ones, cardboard ones that you can make your own from Google, and I think HTC even has their own. So it'll be interesting to see how this develops in the future. One problem people have is that because Facebook is partnering with Oculus Rift, they might turn this virtual reality technology into more of a social tool rather than a gaming tool, but really that's good and bad because you know, it might be, it might result in people seeing ads whenever they use the VR headset, but also it can allow people to experience like many different virtual worlds, whether it's like a video game world or just like being in a conference halfway around the world just by wearing this headset, even though you're not there. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, check out my website that will be, you know, put up with this video and it will have links to my whole research paper and have a nice day.